So you want to know the difference between a freeze dryer and a dehydrator. Well, they're two different machines, end of story, right? No, no, they use two different processes, but instead of boring you with all of the details of how those work, although we will cover those too because it's kind of cool, let's do an experiment together, okay? And in this experiment, we're gonna take a food and we're gonna run half of it through the dehydrator and the other half of it through the freeze dryer and we're gonna see the difference. Cool? All right, then let's head over to the freeze dryer. Okay, so a freeze dryer works by cycling through periods of heat and cold and then using a vacuum pump to suck out all that water while preserving the nutrients and leaving the food looking like itself, just without any water. Freeze dryers can cost anywhere from a few thousand dollars on up, depending on the make and model that you get. You can make one yourself, but then you've got to find all the parts and it can be a little bit hard. Thankfully, there's a lot of YouTube videos on making do-it-yourself freeze dryers if that's your jam. And you'll notice that this actually, we just finished our defrost cycle, so it's still got a little bit of water in it. So let's leave this open to dry and head over to the dehydrator. Dehydrators work by using heat, heat settings here, to get as much food, as much water out of the food as possible by essentially cooking it at a low temperature. If you wanna think of common examples of things that get dehydrated, we're talking about jerky and fruit leather and, you know, fruits, things like that. Um, oh, that's just awkward. So yeah, that's what a dehydrator does. It does not use cold and it does not use a vacuum. It simply uses heat. A good dehydrator can cost anywhere from $50 for smaller units to a couple hundred dollars for larger units. Personally, we love the Excalibur and no, they're not sponsoring this video. Okay, so now you know a little bit about how dehydrators and freeze dryers work, which is great, but now it's experiment time. We have a bag, big bag of apples and we are going to divide it into two groups. 200 grams each sound good? Why not? Makes the math easier for me anyway. 200 grams into the freeze dryer. The other 200 grams into the dehydrator because we wanna know how, you know, how much food is left. What does it look like? What does it taste like? And what does it weigh? Cause you know, it's 200 grams when we put it in. So what's left? The dehydrated apples went from 200 grams down to 30 grams. And I was pretty impressed because you know, that's a pretty significant weight reduction. It's gonna make it a whole lot easier to store. And dehydrated apples will store well for several months or longer, depending on where you store them. Currently I'm in my food storage and it's nice and chilly in here. So they would probably store really well through the winter, but they're not gonna last that long cause I'm gonna eat them. Now, what about the freeze dried apples? The freeze dried apples also uh, had a weight reduction of about the same. They were 31 grams from the original 200. Now a difference of one gram, that's probably not statistically significant. So really they experienced the same weight loss, which to me was kind of shocking because I was expecting the freeze dryer, uh, freeze dried apples to weigh less than the dehydrated apples. But you know, this is one experiment, so there's probably room for more experimenting and taste testing later. In any case, those are the results I got. So let's see what they look like. All right, here's the difference between a freeze dried apple slice and a dehydrated apple slice. Let's hold them up there for comparison. The freeze dried apple slice looks, well, like I just cut it, except dry. You'll know that a freeze dried apple slice is done because it will snap right in half. And let me get this close to the microphone so you can hear the snap because it's really quite satisfying. All right, here's a fresh one right next to the microphone. Did you hear that snap? It was just so satisfying. The dehydrated apple, I tend to like them a little crisper than other people. So I left it in a little longer, which may have contributed to the fact that both the dehydrated and freeze dried apples weigh the same, but I guess I just like crispy apples. So 
also snaps, although it's not quite as satisfying a crunch. And there is actually a little layer of moisture still left in the middle. So while they weigh the same, these are not gonna keep as long. Uh, just for comparison, here is the inside of the freeze-dried apple. It's a nice, even color, no obvious liquid lines, versus the dehydrated apple has a little bit of a, a coloration change there. That's the moisture. So, a little bit left in the apple, none left in the freeze-dried apple. But they did come out looking very similar. Now, I have heard, just because, you know, if we're going to do an experiment, let's go all the way, right? I have heard and seen a couple of videos here on YouTube where people are like, you don't need a freeze dryer to freeze dry food. Just stick it in the freezer for several months. And then it's freeze dried because it's been frozen and then it dried. No, that's more like frozen mummification. But for the sake of being thorough and because I forgot to take the peaches out of the freezer, this is what quote unquote freeze dried peaches look like. Really, they just look like they're desiccated little frozen pieces of peach. And they don't break open very easily. Freeze dried peaches look like a cross between a freeze dried peach and a dehydrated peach. And it's not really either. And worse, these have taken on the flavor of everything else that was in the freezer. So they're not really usable. In fact, they're gonna go to my chickens because they'll appreciate them. I won't, but I'll appreciate them later in the form of a delicious fresh egg. For comparison, this is what a frozen peach looks like. Notice how it's still all plump and full of water and deliciousness. Yeah, this is what a frozen peach should look like. And as soon as my freeze dryer is ready, I will be freeze drying those because freeze dried peaches are just so versatile. And no offense to the dehydrator, but I don't really care for dehydrated peaches. So freeze dried it is. And for one more comparison, this is what the freeze dried peaches look like. They look just like fresh peaches. The satisfying snap of being totally dry inside. No discoloration, no dryness. These things last, well, if I didn't eat them so quickly, they'd last for years, but I do eat them quickly. They're delicious on cereal. I mean, I could, you know, reconstitute them in some water, let them sit overnight, and they'd be just like fresh peaches, but I like them on cereal. So I just pour my cereal of choice, add some fresh peaches, and I might break them up, or I might just stick them on whole slices like this, and then I add the milk. And then it's like I'm eating Special K, but with whatever cereal I want. And no, Special K isn't sponsoring this video either. Now. Before you think I've forgotten about our question of who wins, the freeze dryer versus the dehydrator, the answer is it depends. Depends on what you need, depends on what your budget is, and it de depends on how worried you are about zombies. Or any other natural disaster. Not that zombies would be a natural disaster, but you know what I mean. In any case, I think it's still too close a race to call, so I'm gonna keep testing and I will keep you updated. So really, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so beyond just the equipment differences between freeze dryers and dehydrators, that's what the food looks like. There's a total difference in how it feels, what it looks like, and how dry it is. And that dryness is gonna in translate into how well it stores, because if there's water and air, it's gonna rot. So if you can get the air out and you can get all the water out, it's gonna last a whole lot longer. Think Egyptian pyramids longer. Okay, but let's not test that because I mean, really, I've eaten 15-year-old canned plums before, and I don't recommend it. It's dangerous. So, yes, go ahead, and if you found any of this information useful, please give the video a like, and I'd love it if you subscribed so that you can see all sorts of other cool experiments and fun stuff later related to all things food storage, homesteading, chickens, you name it, we're going to talk about it. So please give the video a subscribe and don't forget to go ahead and store that food because you never know when the zombie overlords might decide to take over. Not really. <laughs>